If you look on their underside, they're usually yellow. Nope. Sorry, guy. Hey guys, I'm Chris Ignato. So this is another millipede video, and I don't know if you saw my previous one, but I wasn't too certain on the species. It was either Aphaloria virginiensis or Aphaloria multichroma. And this species, I'm pretty sure, is Aphaloria virginiensis, and they are beautiful. Check them out. These millipedes are a lot of fun to watch. Um, one of the reasons why is they're very easy to care for. I mean, they're pretty much detritivores. They feed on dead and rotting plant matter, other organic matter such as dead animals, and they'll even feed on scat and animal waste. So, needless to say, they're really easy to take care of. So in my last millipede video, I was walking around one evening and I found a lot of dead specimens and I wasn't really sure why. What is up with all these millipedes I'm finding? You know, I was pretty sure it was due to a parasitic fungus, but I didn't know much about that. So, with further investigation, it turns out, yeah, it was a fungus, known as Arthrophaga myriopodina, and it specializes on millipedes. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And one of its characteristics is, before the millipedes succumb to it, they actually climb on top of logs and rocks and things, and then they perish. That was textbook for what I was seeing. Needless to say, I had to be really careful not to infect uninfected specimens with these fungal spores. I usually find these millipedes in woodland habitats to have a lot of moss and ferns and often a lot of vernal pools. It's really hard to film these individuals, but if I get real close, you can see those compound eyes and even their little antenna using to sense the environment and to find food sources. Millipedes are often mistaken for centipedes, but they are completely different creatures. Centipedes have one pair of legs per body segment, whereas millipedes have two. Millipedes generally have the legs coming out the bottom of their bodies, and centipedes have them coming out the side. If you want to know more about centipedes, click on my centipede video right here. A cool tidbit about these millipedes is the fact that they can cycle and shift a ton of earth and soil matter every year making these things just as valuable as worms for the environment. In fact, in many ways, even more crucial because they are native individuals. The coolest thing about these millipedes is when threatened, they can produce hydrogen cyanide gas to defend themselves. Yeah, hydrogen cyanide gas. In fact, it smells just like a cherry slushy or cherry cough drops. No pun intended, but a dead giveaway is that aposomatic coloration. You've got black highlighted with either red or yellow, and in some specimens, both of those colors. Like all aposomatic coloration, it serves as a warning to would-be predators. It says, stay back, I can either hurt you or I taste very bad. In this case, it does both. They taste very bad, and if a bird or something eats them, it can actually die. The cyanide these millipedes produce isn't particularly dangerous to human beings, but if you got it in your mouth, or God forbid you ate one, you'd get pretty sick, and if it gets in your eyes, it would be tremendously painful, and it can actually lead to temporary blindness. If a millipede chooses to deploy that tactic, it can actually take up to seven or eight months to replenish that defense mechanism. So obviously, they only use it when they need to or as a last resort. So that does it for this video. If you like this video, try checking out some of my other millipede videos because they're really cool and they're pretty common throughout eastern United States. Um, this is my favorite species, Aphaloria virginiensis. If you happen to be in a deciduous mixed woodlands and there's a lot of moss or ferns about, try checking under some logs and things and you might find this species too. Thanks a lot for watching guys. Once again, I am Chris Ignato, signing out.